Hello, everyone, and welcome to um, another of our Journey to DU series here, hosted so that you can try to get some idea of what it'd be like to study here at the University of Denver, even if we're still unable to interact in person as we would really like to. Um, I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name is Jacob Wooden, and I'm the Associate Director of International Student Admission here at the University of Denver. Um, but I'm joined by a panel who know a lot more about the subject that we're presenting on today, the Daniels College of Business. Um, we're going to be able to answer a lot of your questions and give you some sense of what it's like to, to study um, at the DCB. I'm sure many of you may have just joined us from the Instagram live tour of the, of the DCB, but we also have ongoing Instagram live tours um, at our Instagram channel for the rest of the day. So if you want to keep exploring the campus, that's a great way to do it. I also want to start by reminding everyone that the chat function is disabled for this webinar, but the Q&A function, which is a little button right at the bottom of your screen, is on and is a great way for you to give us any questions you have um, related to what the panelists are saying or related to other things. We'll try to answer some questions in the back and try to answer some questions on air um, as we get near the end of this time. I am joined by Professors Conrad Cicatello and Professor Chris Hewen as well as two students, um, Matt Walker and Ruchita Ragunandan, who are both going to um, be able to give you a little bit more about what it's like, a little more perspective from the student side about what it's like to, to study here. So with that, I will hand it over to Professor Chicatello, who will kick us off. Thanks, Jacob, and welcome, everybody. Um, I'm going to put up my screen and just give you some introductory slides about the Ryman School and in the, in the Daniels College of Business. So the Daniels College of Business um, is part of DU, the oldest independent school in the Rocky Mountain region. And from a business school perspective, what that really means for us is we've been around a long time and we've had a lot of very successful graduates. So along with having a very engaged and outstanding faculty and, and Chris Ewan will be speaking to you today, and he's definitely that, um, we also have a very robust now, recent graduates, graduates from decades ago, and especially in fields like finance, that network is really powerful. The reason that I came to the Daniels College, and I've been here since 2017, previously working at Georgia State University in Atlanta, Penn State University, and the Air Force Academy, 33 years as a faculty member, is I really like the blend of having that student engagement and that student success be at the point of our reason to be and our faculty at the same time being outstanding scholars. So finding that balance, which really fits when you think about areas in finance, like the one that Chris is involved in, sustainable investing, um, give that student a really outstanding experience. So why the Daniels College? So I've shown you here basically two forces. And when I think about coming to be an undergraduate student here, being prepared day one to enter the workforce and to progress in the workforce, being career ready, what does that mean? That's what we're here to help you achieve. And it's a combination of skills. So certainly we'll hear more about finance today and there are hard skills in finance, quantitative skills, data management skills, project skills, accounting and budgeting and planning. But I wanna be sure you also think about the value of those softer skills. Even in an area like finance, which some people can think, oh, it's all about numbers. These soft skills are really important. So in a school our size with our small class sizes and our array of engagement activities. So Matt and Ruchita will talk to you today about our finance club is just one of those where you would interact with alums, you have the opportunity to lead as a student. Uh, this is the combination that you have to think about crafting, really regardless of the discipline that you choose within business. But Daniels is set up to give you this balance between these hard and soft skills in a small class setting that will make you career ready. So I wanna talk a little bit more about finance because that, that is our school. Finance is a really broad discipline. If you think about finance, everything from your own personal finances to a household, to a business, to a whole economy, 
cannot exist without finance. Finance is central. So our school treats finance as a very broad discipline and offers you a wide array of courses, right? Whether they be investments oriented or corporate finance oriented, uh, they are here in the Ryman School and we allow you to craft with our choice of electives in the major, something that's tailored to your interest. The other point here, which is key, being engaged. So as an undergraduate student here, what we really want you to do, we nudge you to do, and you'll see two really good examples of it today with, with, with Cheetah and Matt, is you get involved in the practice. So your curricular activities are complemented by your extracurricular activities. In particular, internships are, are really important. And I'm gonna give you some data here about how we do with that. So finance is a large undergraduate major for DU. At about 400 majors, we're the largest major in the college and one of the largest majors in the university. We are at a point now where about three quarters of our graduating students have had at least one internship. My goal is to make that 100%. And we're putting in place processes to achieve that. Several, many actually, uh, of our students do more than one. So if you think about having an internship, that's great. But if you're able to do two, now you can compare and contrast and you build your story for employers because you have had the opportunity to be engaged and practice what it is you've studied. Our club is really active as we have testimony here today from our two students. Um, and that is another key way to get involved in leading and in interacting in the broader community uh, of the finance discipline and interactive coursework. So we have a great example today in this journey to DU as Professor Ewan has joined us. And he is the one who teaches the Ryman Fund, which is managed by students. And he's gonna to talk to you today um, in just about one minute. So why a career in finance? You're good quantitatively. That's part of a lot of finance disciplines, but you're also good interpersonally. Right, that you have both of these things. We're gonna to try to build in you a balance between your quantitative skills and your, and your qualitative skills. And I said the line here, grow from the back of the office to the front of the office. That's a metaphor from you may get your first job based on your quantitative skills, but you will grow in your profession by being able to have those team building, organizational, and ultimately the ability to bring revenue into your enterprise. That's how you grow to the front of the office. So that's how we want you to think about your education here is really both those pieces. We are in the process of creating what we call career pathways in finance. Basically, we have taken the entire industry, broken it down into areas and now defined pathways with target activities that you should do along the way. It's a big project, it's ongoing, we're working on it now, but just to give you a sense of how broad the industry is, you can look at these major areas. There's business or corporate finance, there's institutions like banks and investment banks and insurance companies, there's investment and asset management, there's now the emerging field of wealth management, which is very, very big here now in the front range, and there's emerging areas, and Professor Ewan will talk about one of those today, which is the notion of sustainable investing, that is his area of scholarship. So I wanna introduce first Chris, and then when Chris is finished, we'll have Ruchita and Matt talk to you. So the way that I would introduce Chris is this. Um, he's one of the nation's thought leaders in sustainable investing. And for purposes of Daniels, I think every bit is important. He's an outstanding professor. I have the privilege of reading his student evaluations and they are testimony to how much he cares and, and how great a class the Ryman class is where you put your hands on money and you make investment decisions. So with that, Chris, I'm gonna turn it over to you and uh, thank you for being here. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Hewen and thank you for the introduction, uh, Dr. Sicatello. we appreciate it. I want to share my screen with you and talk about our passion. And I'm going to do it from the standpoint of uh, finance. But if you were majoring in another subject, you would have similar 
experiential um, opportunities, whether you are majoring in management or marketing. But in this case, I'm a finance professor, so I obviously want to talk about finance in particular. And uh, this is a gorgeous shot of uh, our, our campus, of course, and I'm sorry you aren't there today, but it, it really is just one of the most gorgeous campuses that I've ever been to. Um, and it's placed so appropriately that it's close to Denver, which is um, got such a thriving uh, entrepreneurial culture. So, so we're really excited to be teaching business in an area like Denver. I want to talk to you about the experiential um, opportunities that our finance majors have. We really want our students to not just learn the theory of finance. We want our students to take the theories, the ideas, and actually put them into practice. And one of the reasons why that's so important is that when they go out to get internships or they go out for interviews for job opportunities, they can talk about things that they've actually done, how they've taken the ideas that we teach in the classroom and actually put them into practice. And that's what sets them apart, because there are a lot of business majors out there. There are many colleges and universities, but there are not that many students who really get to put cutting edge ideas and theory into practice in the classroom. And so we're very passionate about that. We have a Marsco Investment Center, which is set aside for our finance students. It has a Bloomberg terminal. It has access to Capital IQ, which is another cutting edge database. And it also has access to Clarify, which is another financial database. So we want our students to actually be experienced with these databases. So when they go to internships, they can hit the ground running on day one. Um, the Marsco Investment Center is also the home for our student managed funds. Our students manage over $2 million of uh, an equity portfolio that is part of our endowment fund. And their success is really stunning. I will point to just two examples of how well our students have done in terms of managing the portfolio. Um, and our undergraduate students in the fund that they manage, they only pick about 30 stocks and two of them have been taken over or in the process of being taken over in the past six months. I mean, I almost wanna turn the portfolio over to the students. They identified RealPage and Proficient as companies that were undervalued and the way that you can tell how successful they are is that other companies went out and decided to offer takeovers for these companies, buyouts. And to me, that's just really great proof of the, uh, the value of what our students are doing. We also encourage them to get certifications. Uh, the CFA Institute is the gold standard in terms of professional certifications, but we also have other certifications that students can pursue, um, CMT, the SIE, which is the Securities Industry Essentials, and they can also get certified uh, in using the Bloomberg Terminal. So we want to bolster their resume so that they can get the right internships, so that they can put the theories into practice. Another way of doing that is through competitions. The largest finance college competition around the world is the CFA Research Challenge. And so we have a team uh, that competes in that every year. And there's a, a regional competition. The University of Denver team has won the regional competition more than any other college. And so we're really proud of that, that our students put these ideas in practice. And when they compete in this competition, they present to actual portfolio managers and people out there who are managing money full time. So those are the people who have judged our students to be um, the best. And again, they've won it more than any other uh, school in our region. I want to point out, too, that we also do research in the School of Finance and the Daniels College of Business. And I have published many papers associated with student managed funds, how we hedge risk using options in these funds, how we take a unique approach to add value in these funds. And we transmit this, this knowledge to our students and have them put it to work. So we're not just um, having them casually manage a portfolio. Indeed, what we'd like to do is have them take the cutting edge ideas and put them into practice. One of these ideas that has gained popularity is this idea of sustainable investing. And we've been working with an organization called SASB, which is the Sustainable Accounting Standards Board, in order to 
identify which sustainability issues are important for various companies. I consider this to be risk management for the 21st century. So many companies these days are concerned with how can they create a sustainable enterprise that is not only going to do well for the shareholders, but also for the community at large. And this is becoming very popular in investment practice these days, and our students are actually presenting in our classrooms on these ideas and applying them to companies when they manage an equity portfolio. So what I love about the University of Denver is really the passion of our business students. I mean, I learn a lot from them um, as they reach out and explore new ideas, and they're so excited about putting these ideas into practice. And we're so glad that we were able to actually offer them this opportunity. So thank you for uh, your time. And I wanna turn it back over to Professor Sicatello. Thank, thank you, Chris. All right, what I wanna do now is, is let you hear from two of our current students. Uh, just by way of general introduction, they are both leaders in our finance club. And they're gonna bring you the perspective of somebody who's actually on this walk, which I think is always valuable. So I've asked each one of them to just give a brief story, where, where they came from, why they choose to you, uh, why they choose a finance major, and their impressions of the major. So I'm gonna let Ruchita Raghunandan begin, and then we'll go to Matt Walker. Ruchita, over to you. Thank you, Conrad. So hello, everybody. My name is Ruchita. I'm a finance and BIA major, BIA being business information and analytics. That's what we call it here. I am a second year um, in the school, and I'm right now not taking all the classes that uh, Chris mentioned, but we're, we're on that track. Um, I'm also working as a Microsoft teaching assistant. So if you're coming to DCB, you're going to be taking Microsoft certifications, and uh, I'm going to be teaching those. So you might see me there. I'm also a Daniels ambassador on the Daniels ambassador team, which is what brings me here to talk to all of you. I'm also a professionally trained dancer. I'm performing and taking classes in Denver. So I'm involved off campus as well um, and have done a couple of internships. One has been with a marketing firm and the data analytics area. Now I might be joining First Bank kind of pointing to what uh, professors were talking about, you know, having that compare and contrast, that opportunity that is there for us, um, we can really pick and choose what we really want to do. Um, when it comes to choosing DU, um, I actually had no idea what DU is. My journey is a little different since I come from India. I had not done any touring or anything. My mom told me that this is a good school. Come over here and let's see what happens. And I came here and I saw what happens. It's an amazing school. Um, when it comes to the city, Denver is, it has everything. It has mountains, it has opportunities, it has the growing industry, it has telecom, tech center, and wealth management, as they mentioned, for finance students. I loved the small classes that we have. You really get to know your professors. You, um, it's not going to be a huge class. You're going to listen to a lecture, give a couple of quizzes and pass. You, you really get to work with students. You get to work with professors. There's research opportunities. There's, there's a lot of things that go in and um, it's all true, whatever they were saying. It's not just for the sake of saying it. I love the quarter system. I think uh, being a double major in two difficult subjects, it's been working really well for me so far. I'm graduating on time and I'm able to take all the classes that are you know, leading me to success, I guess. And um, when it comes to finance, I knew I wanted to take finance back in high school. I loved the subject. I knew the basics of it, wanted to dig deeper. And I guess after coming here, after taking a couple of classes, I loved the way the professors teach. I loved the program. And it's really evident that there is engagement. There is a lot of effort that the faculty, the staff, everybody is putting in to um, get us involved in the industry. As they said, there's a lot of emphasis on practice. They're getting us involved and getting prepared for the real world. And as the events chair for the finance club, I would say that it's, again, it's a great club. Me and Matthew, we've both been working on it. We organize events. We get employers to talk to students. We have um, great events where panelists come and talk. So it's, it's a really engaging education um, experience, I would say. 
yeah, that's that's my story, Matt. Over to you. Hey guys, uh, I'm from Ridgeville, Connecticut. Uh, I'm also a second year majoring in finance, and I originally came to DU. Um, coming from the Northeast, I was looking for something new, so I came to Colorado out west, um, looking for more of like an environment. Um, kind of focused experience, so like hiking and skiing, which has been a lot of fun. If you ever have a chance, definitely come out um, and experience the geography. Um, and then more specifically to DU, I came here looking for like small class size, like a medium school population. So DU has like around like 5,000, 6,000 undergraduate. So it's not too small, but it's also not too big. So you'll always see new faces, but uh, you also see your your friends walking around. So definitely a great time. And also um, talking about like the clubs DU offers. So DU offers like all of the sports. So there's like growing hockey um, uh, and then like academic, there's like the finance club, marketing club. So pretty much anything you could want is on campus. Um, and then there's also fraternities and sororities, so, and also business fraternities. So if you're not sure if a fraternity is for you, there's business fraternities that are um, more specific to um, business majors. And that's a great way for networking, which is um, kind of what DU emphasizes to get your network and expand. Um, and then I chose finance because my dad is in um, finance. So he works for a bank um, and I've just always had that mind for business. And then I was, I'm also like interested in the stock market. So one of the reasons I came to DU was for the classes, um, as um, the professors talked about, there's like the Ryman Fund where you manage your own investments. So that like just drew out to me um, and really impressed me. So um, definitely a great time. And then also in the finance club, you meet and network with employers. So we um, every week we usually host events, whether it's wealth management or private banking or private equity. So um, like, uh, next month we're bringing in Goldman Sachs, so it's a great networking opportunity like every week. So you definitely can't come wrong coming here. And I also want to like talk about like the career services we offer. So um, there's like a finance um, career service, um, Ali Machado, who's great, a great resource. Um, I reached out to him about two months ago, um, asking like if he had any connection for internships, and he actually helped set me up for an internship. Um, near my hometown, like 20 miles away um, in private equity. So they're definitely a great resource to use. So DU is a great choice. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Richita. Jacob, do we have any questions to kick us off? Um, and we can, we can take on the questions that you all, uh, you all wanna answer uh, rather than what the professor wants to say. Right. So right now we don't have very many questions. So if people want to, who are in our audience, want to um, send us your questions, it's a great time to do that. Um, I have a question, I guess, first and foremost for the students, if we can. Can you talk a little bit about um, how you found community at the University of Denver? So we talked a lot of the academic appeal here. So how did you find community and how does that kind of intersect with your um, business studies here? Persia, you can go first. Okay. Um, I would say it's it's a mix of both. Um, it's it's more like you, of course, you make friends in your dorm and your classes. You it's always gonna be that there's the first class you enter, it's gonna be really awkward. You don't know anybody, and there's the first person you talk to, you actually go on to be friends with them. It's it's just that's how life works. But then um, kind of taking towards the formal note, when you work with teams and groups, professors just randomly assign and you're forced to work with them. But then sometimes those teams come together really so well, you find common points. And it's a lot of engaging activities, I would say. We, we do projects together, you need to figure out Excel together. So that takes a lot of brain power together. And Matt and I are actually in a group um, this quarter. So we're working on a marketing class. So you never know, you're gonna see the same faces again. That's what the good thing about DU is. Um, I'm taking the same classes with almost the same people. So I find familiar faces. We're like, hey, what's up? How are you? Um, so it's that familiarity develops, that connection develops. I would say that's how I found friends and connections. 
Yeah, same for me. Just like kind of experiencing like through clubs, you'll meet people as well. And also Denver has a great school culture. Everyone like goes to the hockey games and the hockey games are packed and a lot of fun. So there's definitely and lacrosse games too. There's definitely like not a shortage of activities to be doing with your friends. So um, just like meeting people, um, everyone's super friendly. Um, so just like if you just put yourself out there, you'll make friends. Thanks so much. So a good question um, that I'll open to the panel and whoever wants to, to chime in here. What exactly does a normal class look like in actual day to day activities? And like, what does that coursework look like? Chris, you want to talk about talk about yeah. the course you teach? I'll, I'll be glad to talk about that. So uh, I've worked at the University of Denver for 16 years. Um, right now I'm teaching two classes, so I, I'd love to give you just specific numbers associated with that. And one of the classes that I teach that uh, is the student managed investment fund class, we have 11 students in that class right now. So um, typically when we meet, when there's not a pandemic, we have a horseshoe shaped room. So um, it's almost like a conference room. We come into class with everyone participating. The vast majority of the lectures and things is actually done outside of class. I've recorded lectures associated with that. So when we go into class, it's me doing presentations, but it's mostly the students doing presentations. We have a camera in front and in back of the classroom. So we can actually bring in alumni and they can see everybody in the classroom um, and just have a great interaction. We're the eighth oldest business school in the nation. And we wanna make um, we want to make use of our alumni network and connect the students to um, our, our alumni and uh, other outside business people. Um, another thing that allows us to do is actually to record student presentations. So we've got a camera in the back. So when a student is up in, in front of the classroom, we can record them and then show it to them afterwards so they can develop their ability to uh, speak very successfully and hone their arguments. Um, I, I teach so I, I talked about one class that I teach that has 11 students. The other class that I teach right now has 30 students. That's very typical of what I've been doing while I've been at the University of Denver. And in fact, the College of Business doesn't even have large lecture halls. We're not a research school where we have grad students teaching classes. We have professors teaching classes. And so I'm really proud of the interaction that we have with the professors and the students. Um, let me add one other thing about the curriculum. Um, I often teach evaluation class, equity evaluation. And what we've done is we've taken the, uh, the readings from an actual professional credential and we use them in the classroom so that the students um, know what practitioners want to, um, want to know when they actually are getting professional certifications after they graduate. Um, and so we, we really try and take um, real world readings, things that, that people who are actually managing money are reading, the concepts that they think are important, and we're, we're handing them off to the students. Thank, thanks, Chris. Just briefly, if you major in business, you're going to have a core curriculum, and Rachida and Matt can talk about that because they're in it. That covers broadly the discipline of business, so management, marketing, business information analytics, finance, accounting. Then you major and you get depth in a particular area. So the finance major has nine classes, five are required. And again, I showed you those areas, those five required classes sort of cover the broad area of finance. And then your electives, your choices of those other four classes where you could focus in things like Chris just talked about. You know, I wanna focus in investments so I can take the rhyme class. So that's the architecture of the curriculum generally. And Rashida mentioned the quarter system. This is one of those hidden advantages of DU. Quarters, there's more periods, right? So it's 10 weeks, not 15 like semesters. So if you're a good planner, you can do things like double majoring and minoring and not take you know, extra time to do it. Do all these enrichment activities like case competitions. So just keep it in mind that that quarter system really gives you a lot of flexibility to do things. Um, that a semester system can't really do. Matt or Ruchita, any other comments on course sort of how, how are classes or the curriculum? 
Yeah, I just want to chime in and say the professors kind of organize the classes where it's more of like a, um, what you'd see in like the work environment where it's more applicable to the real world. So everything you're learning in the classroom, you will experience outside. So it's definitely kind of a great introduction. Yeah, and I'll just jump in and talk about like having a double major. It's a lot. <laughs> it can seem a lot. Business information and analytics, that's it's a big major with a lot of required classes. But I would say um, the DCP has done a really great job of having like the common core, business core, and then your majors. It's segregated very well and the quarter system helps you just divide your work up into your semesters and that way not only do you take like a common core class and a major class or business core and everything uh, together it's just a wholesome experience and if you're a finance major it's not that you won't need um, accounting or you know, info classes at all, you need them, you need Excel, you need to know the basics of accounting, you need to know the basics of everything in the business area, regardless of your major. So I think I answered one of the questions in the Q&A. Um, it says, if I'm in the marketing or something, do I have to take management classes? Well, yes, couple, they're compulsory, um, which will really be beneficial. It's not like you'll be wasting your time. Yeah, I'd like to talk a little I'm sorry, uh, Professor Sicatello. I'd like to talk a little bit about the interaction between the students and the professors. To give you an example, I, would, I just want to talk about something that happened yesterday. One stock that has been in the news is GameStop, and short selling has been a hot topic over the past week. Um, our finance club organized an ad hoc event yesterday where the students jumped on with professors to talk about what was going on with this. So it's not just in the classroom that we want to interact with the students, but it's also, um, you know, hitting hot topics so that they're familiar with what's going on and just jumping on a Zoom call to be able to um, catch up with the student. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I saw a question about engineering. Uh, I'm an undergrad engineer, and one of the things I wish I had done is take more business courses when I was an undergraduate engineer. I ended up uh, doing an MBA, but as an engineering student, again, with the quarter system and the flexibility, as Rashida said, of the way that we operate here, you can take business classes. And often they're very complementary, especially the more quantitative classes sometimes in finance are, are very much appropriate for folks uh, in, in, in entirely different schools. These are great guys, thanks so much. Um, there's a question about someone specifically said that they're a little concerned about the pace of the quarter system. So we, we highlight all the benefits, I think, of the quarter system throughout our discussion of in this session and elsewhere about why we think that the quarter system is great. But could anyone, the students, uh, professors, talk a little bit about how students can survive the quarter system and whether the quarter system makes it hard for you to get to know professors because it's so short? Yeah, so um, I, with the quarter system, you definitely learn time management, and it's definitely a great skill to learn. Um, and just because there's 10 weeks, not the usual 15, you still are with the professor like four hours a week. So you're still like learning with them. Um, and you definitely establish that relationship. So if anything, um, I'd say like you get to meet more professors because um, and you can like always check in, go into their office hours and um, you really utilize them because they're a great resource for anything. So um, you just through time management and just like meeting more professors. I, that's a great part of the core system. You generally take fewer, like four typically in a quarter versus like six or seven a semester. So again, I, this is the first place I ever taught that had quarters. It's pretty rare now. And I never had them as a student. I like them because I think it allows you to focus. So you got six or seven things versus four. Um, now you have, you know, this system is fast. It's like, okay, you've got to, you know, you've got to run at, you know, at a faster pace than you're sort of used to on a semester basis. But I think the focus really helps net net, but, but you got to stay on top of it as Matt said. Great. Uh, I'm going to wrap, try to put a few of these questions that we've had together a little bit. Students are asking about whether they have to choose their academic specialty in business in the first year 
or whether they have a little bit of time to choose between the various disciplines. But another side of that is how does the DCB help students decide which of these areas is right for them? I can start off for that. Um, I know a couple of um, seniors who told me this last week, I'm still choosing my major. That's what they said to me. And I was like, really, you can do that? Um, but then for people like me, I plan too early. Um, so that's why I have everything decided. But then if you don't, it's not a problem. The best part is that the, the way, as I said, the quarter system or the way the classes or the curriculum is designed, you get time to decide. Um, you're taking your common core and your business core classes in the first two years. So you get time to figure out what you really wanna specialize in. Um, like if I came in, I didn't have a business analytics major on my calendar at all. I just had finance when I came here. I took info courses. I figured out that, okay, this is an emerging area. This can help me with finance. So that's how I added this major and I was able to. Um, I can even have minors on top of whatever I have. So there is space and time. Um, but I would also like to say that there's a lot of help offered and the help comes from every person you can actually see walking in the hallway. It can come from um, professors. It can come from career services office. It can come from an alumni network that, you know, because they're networking opportunities, you can meet anybody uh, in this campus and they can probably point you in the right direction. So I would say there's help and there's time and space to do so. I want to give a shout out to our undergrad academic advisors. I think led by Greg Grauberger, who is a great servant of DU and has been here a long time. They are really awesome. And I think, you know, we partner with them to do the kind of things that Rachida was just talking about, but that advising is very hands-on um, and it is really, really noticed and, be and benefits our students. That's great. Um, would anybody, probably the professors, but I'm not certain, um, be able to talk a little bit about how artificial intelligence and the study of artificial intelligence is part of the curriculum that we're teaching here at the DCB? Very specific question, but it's timely. So, so let me start, and Chris, I think maybe you can weigh in more, you know, on the investment side and thinking about how PM portfolio management, you know, might be affected. But, you know, so AI, I look at the business information analytics area of the college, um, very strong group. Um, and those are the tools courses. So you start thinking about things like machine learning, predictive analytics, where we can take data, ill-structured data, like how are people reacting you know, on the web to some sort of service or product, scrape it and use it to think about how to make business decisions broadly. So I think this is also something that uh, you know, is, is very live in, in the investment arena. And I'll, I'll let Chris uh, talk about it within the investment context. Yeah, sure. So for our undergrad business majors, we have a class in Python and it's more extensive than just basic Python. Um, Python to me is the primary language that people use for AI and machine learning. Um, in finance, we often have a preference for using R, which is a specialized statistical programming language. And it's what I actually use too. And so we have a couple of classes that integrate R programming into, um, into the coursework in finance. So what you'll find is that different fields have different specialized programming languages. And from my standpoint, I think it's best for students to come out knowing a programming language really well. And it doesn't have to be Python or R, it could be another language, but just being able to learn the programming language develops that logical thought process that if you can learn that, you can you can advance because we know that in five or 10 years, it, what you're going to need to know in programming and machine language and artificial intelligence is going to be fundamentally different than what we're doing today. So we really want to focus on those critical thinking skills and the ability to pick up logical structured thinking and integrate that into solving business problems. Thank you so much, Chris. Another question here is specific to the international business study. So can someone talk a little bit about what international business looks like at the DCB 
And specifically, if the international business major also includes a study of any kind of international law. So I'll take I'll take a shot at it. I mean, the the IB major here is actually one of the co-directors for it. it is one of our colleagues in the Ryman School, Tracy Shu. Um, and as most majors are in finance, it has flexibility in the, in the Daniels College. The IB major has flexibility to allow you to craft. Now, whether or not as an undergraduate, you could take a, a, a class in the Sturm Law School, um, that would be a question I think you'd have to defer to a particular advisor as to whether that was possible. But within the Daniels College, we also have um, a unit that's business ethics and legal studies. So they teach undergraduate courses that you know, link the law and international business and finance and marketing. They're sort of the, the legal glue inside Daniels. So certainly, if you're thinking about that I, IB major, um, get, get that advice about what you can take and whether you can loop in those courses from um, our business lawyers. My unmuting did not work. So thanks so much, um, as I've said before, and I'll repeat it now. Uh, the, another, another question we have is about how majoring in the DCB may interact with being in one of the living learning communities that we have. Um, I don't know if any of either of the students, I don't know if you were part of a living learning community or if either of the professors has any idea about how that would work. Because if not, I can say that <laughs> it's totally possible. Like um, the, you're able to participate in a living learning community regardless of your major. And many students do participate in living learning communities that don't exactly match the major. So you could be a DCB student studying finance and live in an international living learning community or a, um, a residence hall based on some other interests. And so there's so many options for you to kind of tailor your academic experience and your living experience to your interests. Great. A question that I'd like to ask now is how does the concept of the public good? So we like to say that we're a private university dedicated to the public good and that's what we strive for um, across our curriculums. Do you how does that play into the way that we teach finance or any of these other business subjects here at the University of Denver? Let, let me start with an example. Um, when, when COVID hit last March, um, it, it dramatically impacted the fortunes of you know, a lot of people globally, but certainly small business and entrepreneurial business was very hard hit. And we did have some students lose internships so one of the things the School of Finance did is we stood up a scholarship named after our, our benefactor, Scott Ryman, that, that paid a stipend for uh, unpaid internships, focusing on small businesses, uh, startup businesses, and nonprofits uh, in the Denver metro region, who we knew you know, really needed the help. And a lot of these entities, if they're small, they may not even have a budget model. So we had students go in trying to help them through this, this incredible crisis that injected all this volatility into their business. A tremendous learning opportunity to be sure seeing a business in, in this very difficult state of the world with owners you know, potentially losing, you know, losing their entire business, but also something that I think reflects our commitment uh, to the greater good that you know, this, our, this is our region and, and these are our colleagues in the Denver Metro and we want to try to do what we can um, to help them out. So that's an example. I, I'm confident that the, the others on the panel will, will can talk about this issue as well because it's central to who Daniels is. I would just add an example um, and this is related to the finance club and the Ryman School, um, we had this program for refugees, which the hospitality school actually um, organizes. I forgot the name, I think it was Ready for Hospitality or something. These refugees who come to Denver, it's a program for them. Um, and it's kind of training them in this hospitality area, but they also have this personal finance mentoring that the finance club and the department did for them. And I was involved with uh, coordinating that. And I really got to see what change DU was making. Um, 
And as I said, I've not taken those finance classes yet, but I was still able to work with people from all over the world um, and meet them and see what change we're making as an institution. Yeah, I just want to chime in. So I'm actually in that club. It's called the National Society for Minorities and Hospitality. And what we do is we just bring in refugees and we try to educate them on um, like credit cards, like why you need a credit score and like how to get a loan. So that's kind of like how we try to make our impact for people who may, may not trust like the banking system. One of the capstone classes for our uh, undergrad business majors is pioneering business for the public good. And they're very serious about trying to put that into practice and show students how to put that into practice. And I hope that uh, just that's a signal of how important it is in the Daniels College of Business that we have that class um, as an essential part of our undergraduate business curriculum. When our students go abroad, and a, a stunning number of percentage of students do actually study abroad, um, most of them study at a school. And I don't know about the possibility of doing an internship abroad. I think it happens, but um, I don't think it happens most of the time. Maybe some of the other students can add in about that. I saw that as one of the questions. So, so travel's been curtailed because of COVID and um, it's our great hope that by fall we'll be back to a new normal. Um, but. To Chris's point, uh, one of the things that the Ryman School has, has, I've been known well for are our travel classes. So we have done a, a Wall Street trip, a, a Europe trip. Uh, we have a trip to Belize. Um, and we love, we had a trip in microfinance to Africa that we'd like to put back. We're, we're planning with a trip to South America. So I, I call these signature experiences. And I just know from my own children's example. My son, you know, went to Kenya as an undergrad and built water filtration kits as an engineer. Uh, it was truly something that that marked his experience. So, so Daniels, is, as Chris said, is very, very strong into international travel as, as it broadens you. But I think Chris's intuition about, wow, it would be superb to also have an internship experience that's something that, that we are continuing to build out as we think about the signature experience, you know, being maybe a class and a hands-on project, right? So I think forward looking back to a world where we, we can all travel, um, that this is something you can definitely do here. And I know our, our two students will looking forward to it when we, you know, get a year or so out of this and, and can, they can get back, uh, back into uh, study abroad. Yeah, so kind of like talking about like traveling. So since DU's on the trimester, we have from Thanksgiving to New Year's off. So we have that six week break and DU offers something called like interim quarter classes where you can actually go down and travel to maybe like somewhere in Europe or maybe down south to like South America. And you take like one class and you work with the community there. So that's a definitely another great opportunity if you're not sure, like maybe like study abroad like too long or maybe just want another experience. There's always that option of just traveling during the quarter break. Terrific. So we have one last question, and then I think we'll, we'll wrap up here. Um, I'm hoping you can answer this a little bit. So the question is specific about the business analytics courses in major. So can anybody talk a little bit about what the course worker classes looks like for business analytics, or maybe even talk about how business analytics intersects with the study of finance or other things in the BCB? So let me start, and I'll let, I'll let you, the double major, talk about this, Rashida. So um, we share the fifth floor with the analytics department. And I think that that is quite appropriate because I think of us as very close cousins. Um, they have the tools, we have the applications, right? So when you study analytics, we talked about a number of the classes already. So programming languages, you know, database courses, stats courses, you know, Python programming, that's a business analytics uh, undergrad and that's a toolkit. Um, so what Rashid is doing is like, okay, she gets the tools, but finance has that, where do I use the tools, right? So 
I love that combination. And I, you know, so the students who are double majoring or majoring and minoring, it's very common to have, you know, major minors in finance and analytics and accounting. Those are probably the most common ones, right? So minors are also something in this quarter system that, you know, you can get a minor or even two. Again, if you're planning early and you have that, you know, vision about how you want this to lead you, um, these combinations are possible. So, Rachida, um, other thoughts about that just because you're in it? Um, yeah. Um... You probably gave a simpler explanation of what I would have dragged on about, like uh, business analytics being the tools and finance being the application. That's exactly what I had in mind when I chose these two majors. And uh, yeah, when it comes to the courses, it starts with the basics, you know, statistics, the mean, average, and everything, which I guess all the business majors take. It's it's the business core. Then you move on to something which is database management, data mining. Then you get into the core of it, and then you get into, I think, business automation processes. There's project management as a separate course. There's, I think, one course which comes towards the end, I think, capstone project or something, which is like a whole project you do for that class. Um, I don't know the details, but that's something really practical based. Then um, I would say the BIA program, it's a huge program, as I said, it might seem difficult, but it's really very, very applicable. Um, I mean, it's business analytics is tied to marketing, it's tied to finance, it's tied to every other major probably, and that's why it's so useful. So even if you feel that the major is a lot, do a minor in it, and minors are very much accommodating with DU. So I would just add that. Thanks so much to our panelists. We really appreciate the insight you were able to give our audience. Thank you, um, the audience, for tuning in and, and watching this and for your terrific questions that helped guide this um, presentation. Um, with that, we're wrapping up here, but we do hope that you'll continue to explore what the University of Denver has to offer with the rest of the programming that we have today and throughout the coming months as you kind of make your decisions about where you're going to call home for the next four years. Specifically today, we, we do keep having some of those Instagram live tours that I mentioned at the start um, of various parts of campus. And at three o'clock today, we have a session dedicated to exploring our four plus one and three plus two um, combined undergrad master's programs that might be particularly interesting to, to students on this call. So again, thank you so much. Um, there will be a recording of this that's posted online for you to look at later, and we hope to stay in touch.